What's up guys, David Land here and welcome back to Project Cars 2 where we are going to be taking a look today at a 30 minute IMSA style multi-class race here at the Long Beach Street Circuit. The classes featured in this video will, like I said, be IMSA styled. So LMP2, GTE, and GT3 will be the classes. The car you're taking a look at is an LMP2 uh, Liger powered by a Nissan for Oak Racing. That is the car I have chosen to take on for this race. I qualified in the sixth position, sixth overall, and sixth in LMP2. Uh, there are five LMP2 cars ahead of me and uh, a lot of GT traffic that we're going to have to deal with throughout this race. But uh, I'm very excited to take on this challenge. So uh, without any further ado, let's head into the traffic jam known as Long Beach. So here we are on the formation lap. I actually misspoke earlier. We're actually going to roll off in fifth position, just behind four other P2 cars, three Ligiers and an Oreca. Starting on our row, as you can see, is one of the factory four GTs. So the GTE cars really aren't that much slower here at Long Beach than the contemporary P2 cars. Now, when a P2 car doesn't have any traffic ahead of him and is on an, uh, an unmolested lap, I guess you could say, they'll run about two or three, four seconds faster than the GTE cars. Of course, once you get into traffic, then it starts to get a little bit fishy and everybody's lap times start to come together and it creates, like I said, a traffic jam. So we're going to try to avoid the traffic jams today. Now here's the deal. We're racing on full damage, 110% AI. The aggression is at 80. Uh, I actually, you may have noticed my Project Cars versus Reality video I did earlier today, and if you haven't seen that, check it out. But the AI I had set to like 30 and, uh, for aggression, and that was not doing it. The AI were way, way too slow because they were way, way too timid in the corners. So hopefully we won't have to deal with that, but also balance it so that we won't be getting run over, especially by lower class cars in the traffic. And that's what I'm a little bit worried about is starting next to that Ford GT. Not sure what his, first of all, top speed capability is down this, down Shoreline Drive, and then his braking going into the corners. I've got Dunlop tires on my car. He's got Michelins. So we're going to see how this goes. Into the world famous hairpin, and the AI are running into each other already. We're going to try to actually make the corner. And the grid is starting to form up. And we are about to go racing here at Long Beach, and we're underway. Thankfully, our uh, row mate, the Ford GT, kind of stayed back, so we're not going to have to worry about him. There's a Corvette behind him, so that's the battle in GTE, but we don't care about that right now. We, we, what we care about is this battle in P2. So we're going to get the car down into turn number one. Everybody's a little bit slow. The Oreca down to the inside. The Ford is behind me. We're just going to be very careful here on the opening lap. We don't need to make any amazing moves. We also don't want to lose too much time as the Oreca is going to go very slow through there. We're actually going to get him. So now it's Lige 1, 2, 3, 4 to start out. And that corner is very, very difficult. A lot of times it will catch you out. And if it doesn't catch me out by the end of this race, I will consider myself very lucky. Uh, and I didn't run that corner very well. You have to run so close to the walls on some of these apexes. And now we've got the Oreca next to me again. I'm not going to try to drive around the outside, which is probably wise of him because I went really wide at the apex. I'm just looking out the back of uh, Liger. No, I can't really see the mirrors in this car, so I'm going to have to do that looking backwards thing every now and then. So I apologize if you uh, have reality broken for you with that, or uh, your suspension of disbelief, I should say. Into the hairpin for the first time at speed. And by speed, I mean 30 miles an hour. And now up through the gears, down Shoreline Drive. Again, for the first time at racing speed. So we're ahead of the Oreca. 
But we've got the three Ligiers ahead of us. And they're starting to gap me a little bit, so we got to get up there. Try to challenge them as best we can as I was wide at the apex in turn one. It seems like the AI are very slow in the fountain section. And that's where I can make up some time. Especially in this corner as well. I always feel like I'm faster than the AI through there. This is the bugaboo corner. Got to be so careful again. <laughs> Very understeery off of the corner. Now into here. Let's try to break early this time. Car down. And I tried to apex a little bit better, but again, you can see the position indicator there is letting me know that the Oreca is starting to close in. So I didn't have an amazing okay, sector there. And he's still there. So it's a close race, so 110% AI is a good match for me at this track, it seems. And I am driving a little bit conservatively as well. As you can tell by my fairly early braking, fairly early downshifts. Because again, it's a long race, it's 30 minutes as we get brakes locked up a little bit going into the hairpin. The Eureka was all over the back of me for a second there. But I again find myself having better grip through the hairpin generally than the AI do. So we're going to run down shoreline drive once again and into turn one. So let's see if we can get this first sector a little bit better this time. This is where we're going to make up a lot of our time. Only third gear through turn one. I'm kind of surprised it didn't go down to second. Whoop, see? I locked the brakes up. I got a little too aggressive. Going into, the, going into the fountain, which was uh, a bit silly of me to be honest, but apparently I still set the fastest first sector of the race, as you heard the race engineer, aka the Stig, because it's Ben Collins who, if you didn't know, played the Stig during uh, Top Gear's heyday. As we get right down next to the wall. That's your best split time in sector two so far. He's going to be saying that a lot because I, I am improving every time we go around the track. So again, just I'm driving a bit, a bit timid right now. Right now I'm more concerned about keeping the car on the road and off the walls. I am about outright pace right now. Okay, we can build up the speed. A long race to go here. There you go, fastest lap, at least for me, probably not of the race. I'm guessing the leaders are a little bit faster at the moment. And then turn one. Picking up the throttle probably a little late there. First gear. Well, understeer. A lot of understeer. The car is very, handles very differently when it's uh, on a full load of fuel versus, you know, qualifying trim where you've got a lot less fuel. It just feels like you have to steer so much. And I almost lost the car there. It didn't look like it. But I can tell you, the back end of the car was fixing to come around. Again, just got the Oreca lurking back there. But I still see what looks to be the cars just ahead, so we're not that far off. They were just entering this corner when I said that. Of course, that was seconds ago, and seconds on a racetrack can be an eternity. Get down here in the hairpin. Absolutely, completely crossed up there. So I'm not getting off the hairpin as particularly well as I should be. Let's pick the pace up a little bit now, mate. We're putting in some consistent time, but we need to push now. So yeah, the race engineer is not impressed with my speed at the moment. I don't blame him. Oh, there's a debris. Somehow I didn't hit it. Lucky I phased through it. There, there's a little bit better. 
That was a little bit better through the hair. Uh, the the... So yeah, there you go. So we just set the fastest first sector, period, bar none of the race. So that instills me with a little bit of confidence. Getting down nice and easy. Yeah, I'm still at maximum attack through here. Getting onto the back straightaway, which is a problem because, again, you know, you've got to you got to put the whole lap together. You can't just go fast in sector one and then be grandma through the second two. Ooh. But you also can't hit the wall, which I just did. I don't think I I probably didn't damage the car that badly. It's funny these sports cars are incredibly resilient when you touch the wall. Yeah, no, no damage at all. So we cross up in fourth gear, fifth gear, down the main stretch, and still got that Eureka breathing down my neck. A little bit of a lock up there going into turn one, not what I want to be doing. Just not slowing down enough for the hairpin. The problem was I drove an Indy car before I did this. So I'm used to a little bit better performance in the corners. <laughs> These P2 cars produce an incredible amount of downforce. But their tires maybe just not as good as the Indy car's tires. And that lack of mechanical grip hurts you a little bit. next to the wall again. Just try to keep the Eureka behind us. Surprised we haven't actually caught any traffic yet. I suspect the leaders are in traffic. Or they are about to be. Another bad corner. So I need to be in second gear there. And not third gear. I don't know why I keep trying to take it in third. Now into the hairpin. Get the <laughs> wheel unwound. That was not a very good corner. That's like the teacher saying, uh, uh, you, you did some great effort on this paper, but it still sucks. Oh, that was so close. That was the tires on the edge of that heat in there. There we go. Good stuff. That's the Ooh, I did not like how I hit that curb because the car picked up off the ground. 20 minutes remaining. It kind of floated there, so we got 20 minutes to go, so we still got quite a ways in this one. But we've survived 10 minutes. So that's an accomplishment, right? Still got the Eureka all over the back of me. I'm just struggling with the mid-speed corners because this just feels like I just have no grip in the front end. Here's a little bit of, and, I, and of course I took it in third gear when I said, oh, I'm not going to take anything in third gear. Oh yeah, I guess I will. Into the hairpin, let's see if we can take this a little bit better. Eh. I would describe that as just I dog. Just I dog. Now down the main straightaway again. Seems like our Ligier friends have pulled away. Which is unfortunate. So again, we're going to have to kind of pray for some traffic here to uh, get us back into the mix. go. Well, that was me getting sector one right for once. At least I felt like I got it right. Just 
just kind of chasing the car there as I got a little bit low. And again, Eureka all over the back of me. Well, maybe not. There you go. We're fast. Or I did my fastest personal time. Sector 2. Uh, touching the wall again. Stop that, David. You moron. See, I, I, you know, I don't even have to have the comment section do it for me. I do it for myself. And again, just blowing the hairpin, no doubt about it. We're actually going to miss our fastest lap of the race. We're nine seconds behind the car ahead of us. So clearly, we are not doing a good job. We're not doing an effective job right now. There you go. That was definitely brave of me, for sure. Possibly stupid, but brave to go through there in third gear. Almost catching the wall on the exit of the fountain. On the curb. Probably don't need to hit that too much. And now that Oreka is starting to catch me in sector one, which is probably not a good thing, seeing as that's my best part of the track. throttle. Ooh, catch the wall again. That is going to get me one of these days. Okay, I need to start getting more confident with my apex because right there, I need to be way closer to the wall than I was. And we're starting to see some traffic for sure now. I had been letting go of the wheel the other times, and that time I kept a, hand, a firm hand on it to keep the, the dang thing to unwind properly. And there you go. We set our best lap of the race with the race engineer once more, and I agree with him. So we're going to run the inside curve pretty hard there. I'm actually surprised that that didn't upset the car more than it did. Ooh, it was good. they had the traction control kick in there, so that was uh, that was me uh, really making a mistake. Thankfully, it was at low enough speed that the traction control saved me there. I do have the assist on real, so there there's traction control and I think maybe ABS in this car. What's cool about this game is you can actually turn the percentage of traction control you run down or up depending on your situation. So were it to suddenly downpour, I could turn my traction control way up and actually drive a little bit better in it. Because we're going to get around one of the Renaults here. Those don't race in America in GT3, <laughs> that's for sure. But we'll get around him pretty easily. So that instills me with a little bit of confidence. Again, you don't want to catch traffic in the worst places, and I'm a little bit worried about catching them in bad spots. And as you can see, we've got some traffic all together screwing it, each other on the hairpin and that's a, a liege and I think that may be for position so we're going to try to get him as best we can here at the little traffic jam at the hairpin and there you go you just heard the spotter say or the uh, race engineer say great move so that's for position that liege the yellow liege not sure what engine is powering it it's possibly it's another Nissan so same equipment as me So ideally, you want to outdo the people who have the same equipment that you do. Just going to dive down into this corner once again. Run the curb. Ooh, do not spin it. Oh, that was so close. Thankfully, did not spin it. And we'll continue on. Kind of an early braking point there. But a decent exit. Running wide. What is this, Star Wars? Why are you saying you got one on your tail? Just say he's <laughs> car behind or something. For the love of God, dude. Alright, we're getting down here. 
I don't know how much of that curve I can run. I don't want to get a penalty. That's one thing you don't want to do. So we're going to get into the hairpin again. It looks like another Liget has been caught up by the traffic. Ah, no, this isn't a Liget. I think this is a lap car. Indeed, it is one of the P2 cars. As my friend Robbie would say, that's a gentleman driver in that P2 car, I would imagine. Why is he going so slow? Why are we lapping P2 cars? That's the second car we've lapped, and it was a P2. It looked like a car got in the inside wall here, so we're going to be real careful as we get through here. We've got a uh, Mercedes. Traffic ahead. Back market coming up. Yeah, no dip. And we're kind of stuck behind the Mercedes. I do know I'm faster through here. Let's see if we can sneak to the inside. Patience, 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 patience. That's not patience. All right, that was a bit terrible. The problem is now I'm in worse section. And you can just see traffic is not giving me any room right now. so slow into there, but we're going to somehow get around, and uh, whew, that was a bit closer than it needed to be, now we're coming up behind an, an NSX, I believe, I thought it was a Ford GT for a second, but no, that is definitely an NSX, You're closing on some back markers. we don't need any drama here, let's keep it focused, no we don't, but we may end up getting it, whoa, as we had a GTE car and a P or a GT3 car just stopped at the hairpin, and I managed to pull around them. I don't know exactly how I did that. I thought I may have phased through them, but anyway, the Liget behind me got uh, caught out for sure back there, and he falls way back. So you get to turn one. So apparently, I can't take that in third gear. Maybe I'm just going down too many gears. That's certainly a possibility. Get down there into the turn. That turn. And that's another Liget just ahead of me, and that's a white car. I know a white Liget qualified on the pole. It's certainly possible that we're about to go for the lead here. Because we passed two Ligets. And, um, and the Eureka. So... That would, that would assume, I would assume, is the leader just ahead. So we're going to have to get lucky in traffic. Best sector two times so far today, mate. Great job. But we set our best sector two. So that's, that's a bit confidence instilling again. Get down to third gear. This time, don't flip the wall. A little too much understeer through there. Get it down. There we go. Okay, off the corner. Again, I was a little bit too timid on the throttle there. Getting off of the corner. We're getting off of the hairpin now. Down the main straightaway, but I've got the leader in my sights. So that is what we need to do right now. Just need to keep him there. Because look at all that traffic. I see a lot, a lot, a lot of brake lights up there. And that is going to be... Well, this is going to be the race right here. Whoever can get through this traffic without too much of a holdup is going to win this race. So he's stuck behind one of the NSXs, several Acura NSXs in this race. Whoa! Oh my god! Did you see that? The Liget launched over the curb. I thought he was for sure were going to wreck. I don't know how he didn't. He clips the inside wall there. So clearly he's taking a much more aggressive apex than I ever would there. And he's actually going to get around the Acura. Oh, now we've got third place here. So it's a three-way fight for the lead. The gold Liget, which isn't the Michael Shank car, by the way. But the gold Liget and the white Liget and my pink Liget, we're all going to go, go racing here see who comes out on top so here we go into the hairpin looks like the leader is going to get held up by prototype traffic well we're going to try not to phase through and that would be cheating 
to gate the lead, but it's more prototype traffic, so I guess that's a PC car, even though it's clearly a P2 car. And now we're racing for the lead in the draft behind the leader. Sixth gear. Oh, this is not what I want to be doing right now. I'm not going to try to outbreak him. He can most certain. Well, Great job out there. there you go. I I wasn't going to outbreak him, but as it turns out, no, that wasn't for the lead because we've got another. Okay, so I was wrong. That was for second place. This is for the lead. The orange Liget, and he launches over the curb too. Holy cow. So we got one, two, three, four in the race running right as that I as I said that. And we've got a GTLM beamer out in front. So he's gonna be a little bit tougher to pass because of his car capabilities and tire capabilities and overall speed in the straightaways. As you can see, the orange Liget looks like he's going to get to the inside, which is not good. As I lock the brakes up, somehow stuffed it down the inside. Somehow the, the white Liget phased through me. Not sure how that happened, but okay. So we got to chase down the orange car here, which kind of looks like the G-Drive uh, Liget. I'm guessing it's a Nissan. I think the second place, the third place car is a Honda Liget. I don't remember all the liveries, what cars they're associated with. I think you heard seven minutes to go while I was getting phased through there. So we got seven minutes to try to take the lead here as the sun sets at Long Beach. I tried to set this up to be kind of the exact time frame the IMSA Long Beach race takes place, which is kind of late in the day. And then I accelerated the time to kind of go over a 30 minute race and or go over 200 two hours and 45 minutes in 30 minutes if that makes sense so we start shifting up through the gears into my worst section but there are a lot of cars out in front as the orange car clobbers the wall and I should have been in second gear there I wasn't not gonna make that same mistake twice and I actually clipped that apex good for the first time today, and I actually gained a little bit on the cars ahead. Is the orange Liget going to get held up by, I believe, a 4 GT? That is. No, 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 no. Ooh, that was so close. I understeered at the apex and almost went into the wall. And he's going to get around the 4 GT before the hairpin, so we're going to need to try to do the same in the hairpin. Oh, and we past the leader we passed the lead I don't know what happened there but he got slowed down coming through the hairpin and I didn't and we'll take the lead here with like five minutes left to go okay we've got an NSX ahead of us GT3 car and he is gonna park me at turn one so we gotta try to be well we're not gonna be able to be brave not anywhere to go with that yet. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, get out of my way, dude. Blue flags. Where are the blue flags? I know what Sebastian Vettel means when he complains about that. And there we go. Okay, so we're around the Acura. And now it's just try to be consistent, which I wasn't consistent there. And then we got to try to get through traffic, which is going to be a can of worms in and of itself. Here, as we're getting to the end of the race, we got the orange Liget, four minutes to go. So I was right about on my estimate when I said there's five minutes to go in the race, so I took the lead. So we'll get down. And now, yeah, coming to the hairpin get this right, shall we? Okay, mate, you're coming up on some back markers now, and some of them might be twitchy. Keep it clean and get by without losing any time. Yeah, I felt like I lost some time in the hairpin for sure, but we'll maintain the lead for now, but we do have prototype traffic ahead. I think you heard the race engineer actually say that these guys may be a little bit quicker than the cars we have been passing previously, so we're going to see. 
that is definitely a prototype. Let's see if we can get around him. There we go. Try to get a better run. It's a little bit of a touch and go move there, but we got him. And actually putting a prototype between us and, and second place is pretty good because again, you know, you've got the performance theoretically about the same. I think we're coming up behind the McLaren now. Another car that doesn't race in America. Well, that's not true. A car that doesn't race in IMSA. They do race in Pirelli World Challenge. Which, by the way, is another officially licensed uh, racing franchise in this game. So you can actually do the World Challenge in this game. Which I might end up doing at some point in the career mode. But here we go. Down the back straightaway. I think this is called Seaside. Just get it down. Do not hit the wall. <laughs> And getting held up a little bit by this McLaren. Okay, I'm gonna discretion better part of Valor here. There you go, look at that. Two minutes to go. Well, we got the second place car right behind us. Two minutes to go, so essentially that means two laps. As we cross the line now, the minutes the laps are about one minute thirty in traffic, so that's two laps to go. So here we go. And now traffic is not an issue. So it's going to be a straight up fight for the win. So I got to use my first sector as a bit of a buffer because I know I'm fast through here. And then just kind of hold it together in the second. As I, you can see the lead I pull out there. where I start to lose it. One minute remaining. Oh, one minute to go, and we've got the orange liche all over the back of me. I've just got to try to hold him off. For one more lap. There, down a gear. Into the hairpin. Do not let go of the wheel, David. On the throttle. Trust the traction control, which I did. We're off the corner a lot better than the orange Lige, so white flag is out. We should be getting the notification. Oh, we ran our fast lap of the race. That's the time to do it. There you go. third gear. Oh, kind of missed the apex there. You don't need to be doing that, David. And then we got traffic to deal with. Ford GT. Don't know what the other one is. Closing on the fat markers. Watch out for the twitchy one. Keep it clean and slide past. Yeah, well, that is going to be the key, isn't it? Well, oh my god, look how many cars there are. We saw three. And you can see DJ all over the back of me. Oh, lock the brakes up. We may be getting very close here. You've got any more pace up your speed. Now is the time to use it. Push as hard as you can. Thank you. Appreciate it. The third gear, we know we can take this in third. The throttle, get the car turned. Well, it looks like traffic's not going to deal factor into it unless they pile up each other down here in the hairpin. Oh, which they almost did. Well, it doesn't matter. Looks like, yes, we are going to take victory at Long Beach. Woohoo! Wow. That was fun. That was really fun. I was surprised I actually survived a 30-minute race while I was filming and did it in the first take. That's incredible. Okay. Well, I'm going to finish the cool-down lap, and then uh, we'll take a look at the replay, and I'll give you some final thoughts of this Long Beach Grand Prix. It was a fun one. So there it was, Long Beach in IMSA. 
That was some serious, serious fun as we're watching the start of the race from the TV perspective, because good grief does this game look good. As uh, you can just see how I did. I mean, this, this was incredible. There's a lot of things said negatively about Project Cars, and a lot of it's justified, for sure. But when this game gets it right, good God does it get it right. And doing a multi-class race at Long Beach, man, this was, this was just fantastic. Just fantastic. So I hope you guys had as much fun as I did doing uh, watching this video as I did recording it, because this was just nuts. Very, I'd have to say, accurate simulation. It was just an amazing battle, as you can see the Eureka really almost lose it there. Oh, how fun was this? How fun was this? So let me know down in the comments and by hitting the like button uh, if you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I love doing these Project Cars 2 videos because I love the broad motorsports spectrum. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Dave Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.